You know, when it comes to seed starting and growing out your seedlings, there is a lot to know. But one of the things that trips up more gardeners than anything else is getting the watering right. Either it's too dry or too wet, and too wet is especially problematic. But in this video, I want to teach you a trick that I've learned on using the weight of the seed tray to determine whether or not your tray needs more water or not. Okay, so I've top dressed my trays, all the seeds are sown. Now the next step would normally be just to go ahead and get all the water into the tray. But with the technique that we need to know, the first measurement is what does the tray weigh before you put any water into it. So that's the next step in this case. Okay, the first weight we need to know is the dry weight. Now, when I weigh this, I need to be consistent. In this case, I have the bottom tray and I have the top tray and I have all the soil in there with the seeds, but no water. So this is the total dry weight and that's my first baseline. And we're looking at right at seven pounds. Now, the next weight you need to know is the fully saturated weight. And so I'm gonna stand out here and fully saturate this seed tray so that every bit of water that can get into the soil is there to the point that it actually has water running out. And I'll show you that too. But what I'm after is making sure this is fully saturated. So that's the weight we wanna know. This process of getting all the water into the soil can take a while because it doesn't readily absorb the water. Typically with seed starting mix, they tend to be, there's a term called hydrophobic, which means it just doesn't take in the water easily. But once it's there, it's there, but you have to be patient. And then typically I'm doing multiple applications and I'm having to stop the watering in between to allow what's there to absorb. And then I come back in and repeat and do it again, literally rinse and repeat. Now, a couple things to know here. You will know that you're getting close to saturation as you start to see the water move through the soil much more quickly than what it was like when you first started when it just sat on top. At this point, I feel like I'm right there because the water is going right through. Now, I've done about 10 passes here and I've waited about a minute in between passes. So just to set your expectations, be patient here. And the other thing I want you to know is as you're watering, Try to use a shower nozzle, whether it's outside or in your kitchen sink, that actually is ideal on low pressure. And then just go over it easily because you don't wanna disrupt the seeds that you've just sown. And if you hit the water too hard onto the soil, you run the risk of those seeds washing out. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at this now. And this is very heavy, much heavier than the seven pounds. And see this water running out the bottom? That's the excess now that it's got room to go. And when that stops dripping, this soil is fully saturated and the term is field capacity. And that relates to soil that is fully saturated once the excess water has washed away. And that's this right here. Okay. In round numbers, that's 11 pounds. And if you recall, the dry weight was seven, which means the additional four pounds is absolutely related to just the water. So at 11 pounds, with the addition of the water, that is at field capacity because all the excess water has washed away. So what we're trying to get to is about half field capacity. So that would be, in this case, nine pounds in this example. So if you get less than nine pounds, if you're weighing, that is an indication that you might want to start thinking about watering. Just a little bit, because you only need to get to nine. But if you weigh and you find out that you're closer to the 11, well, you don't need to add any more water at that point. But target weight is 50% of field capacity. Okay, now I want to show you a couple of examples. And this is a tray of pepper seedlings. And I can tell 
it feels light. Definitely after just having picked up that tray that was at fuel capacity, this is closer to the dry weight I would suspect. So let's go ahead and weigh it and see. And yes, it's at eight pounds, just a pound of water versus the four pounds of water at fuel capacity. So this is a time where it's closer to the dry weight than saturated, so I could add some water here. Now something to keep in mind is that as you look at this, on, on the surface it looks like it's got nice even moisture. And you can't tell by looking at it that it really is on the drier side. Conversely, you could look at a cell tray with seedlings in it and the top looks completely dry, and yet underneath it, it's got plenty of moisture in it. So that's why I want you to try to get a sense of the muscle memory weight as you continue to pick these up and feel them because that is a really good indication. But of course, the best indication is the scale. So again, we're at eight pounds here. This is ready for a little water. Let's look at another example. Also a tray of emerging pepper seeds. And I can tell by holding this one, this is almost as heavy as the one that is at field capacity. And looking at the surface, it does look evenly moist. So again, you can't really go by that, but I will weigh it and see what this one is coming in at. So it's a little over 10 pounds. So roughly, uh, let's call it 10 pounds. This is definitely at the upper end of the ideal range that you wanna be at. I would not wanna water at this point because anything more than this gets you closer to full saturation. And again, we need that all important air space in the soil. So in this case, I would refrain from watering for a day, two, maybe even three. But again, as you get to learn the feel of the relative weights and certainly putting it back on the scale, that will give you a solid indication of whether or not you need to add some water. So how do you do that? Well, just for fun, we're gonna add a pound of water while the tray is sitting up on the scale. Now, how much is a pound of water? It sounds like a lot, right? It's not as much as you think. This is a pound of water, just 16 ounces. One pint is a pound of water, and that's all we're gonna need. And just to verify that, I have a little scale right here I'm gonna put down. And you can see it's 1.09, and the extra weight, the 0.09, is just to account for the plastic. So this is gonna go into this tray, and I'm gonna do it while it's on the scale because we wanna see the weight go from eight to nine, and that's gonna get me closer to field capacity, but that extra pound is gonna be solely from this water. So that's the next step. Now you could spread this all out evenly across the surface, but in the interest of time, it'll make its way back up into these cells. And I'll talk about that when I get this on a level surface, which is next. Now about that level surface, that's just important. So all of the water that's in the bottom of the tray will get wicked up evenly throughout the entire tray versus if you had it you know, slanting to one side, it's gonna be disproportionate. It's still gonna get me to the weight I want, but I want it evenly proportioned. And those holes in the bottom of any tray, that's for drainage, but it also serves as the opportunity for the water to be wicked up as the soil acts like a sponge to bring it back up into those cells. So that's what we're after. And I think now all of that water seems to have gotten back up into the soil. So let's put this back on the scale. The target again is nine pounds, which is gonna get me right at field capacity. So let's test that at this point. And there you go. There's the nine pounds added from the one pound of water, and that's right where I wanna be. And I hope that was helpful to you.